Hi, thanks for joining me on Just Cook with Michael. After watching this video, you're going to know how to make a delicious beef stew. This recipe is delicious. There's some key steps to it that not everybody takes when making a beef stew, but if you follow these steps, it'll be delicious. And what I mean by that is some beef stews, especially like in crock pots, the recipe will just say to throw everything in at once, fill it up with water, be done with it, wait, you know, four hours. This is a little more involved, but the flavors you get out are just make it fantastic. So for example, I'm gonna brown the meat before putting it into the stew pot. I'm doing about a triple batch. I'll put the recipe in the description below. I'm gonna brown this. Because this is so much meat, I can't just put all this meat in one pan. So I'm probably gonna have like two or three pans going. I'm gonna do a little bit at a time because in order to get that mylar reaction, that reaction from the amino acids in the meat that give it the brown delicious color, it needs to be at least 280. And water boils at 212, steam at the same temperature. So if you overload a pan, you're just gonna create moisture and steam. You're never gonna to get to that 280 degrees. So it's basically like you're boiling a piece of meat instead of searing a piece of meat and the flavor difference is profound. So we'll do that, I'm gonna do that with the mushrooms. The mushrooms have protein in them. They're about, I think, 20% protein. Same thing, not overloading the pan, doing them in batches until they get nice and brown, and it just gives it a delicious, full, rich flavor. The same thing with the onions. I'm gonna caramelize those onions. The onions have a lot of natural sugar. Sugar needs to get about to 350 before it starts to caramelize. So I'm gonna saute those in a separate pan until they get to the caramelized state. A lot of times when I look at recipes like this, if you break it down, you know, how do I make this meat the most delicious it could be? How do I make these mushrooms? Is boiling a bunch of mushrooms, does that sound good? No. Sautéing mushrooms sounds delicious and getting them to a brown color. What tastes better, a boiled onion or a, a caramelized onion that's been sautéed for a while? I think everyone will agree to caramelized onion. Each step, you kind of look at each step as you're trying to make perfect. You're trying to really get the best flavor out of it. And therefore, your whole beef stew is just delicious at the end. Some things for this recipe, of course, are some stew meat, some mushrooms, carrots, canned tomatoes, some flour and butter for the roux. Again, a roux is a mixture of 50-50 flour and butter. It's a thickening agent. The reason you make a roux is that the butter when you melt the butter, put in the flour, stir it up for a little bit, and it kind of cooks some of the starch flavor, that raw floury taste out of it, but also every grain of flour is now coated in butter. So when you mix it into your stew at the end to thicken it, those grains disperse evenly. If you just grab like, you know, a quarter cup of flour at the end and throw it in your stew and whisk, it's just gonna clump up immediately. And you don't want that. So some bacon, I have some uncured bacon, It's just uh, uncured bacon doesn't have a lot of maple flavor, but any bacon will do. At the end, I'm gonna finish it with peas and pearl onions. That's at the very end. So after this is cooked for four plus hours, just at the very end before service, I'll throw in my peas, my pearl onions to get them warm. And that it just looks really nice in the dish. Some spices we have are some rosemary, some ground thyme, some whole bay leaf, um, some fresh black pepper, some paprika, some beef stock. This recipe normally calls for potatoes, but I am going to make this recipe, I'm gonna put it on mashed potatoes for Christmas. So I don't wanna put potatoes on top of potatoes. So what I'm doing here today, I'm gonna to eliminate the potato because I'm gonna make mashed potatoes the day of Christmas. And I'm making this about three days ahead of time. That's no problem at all. If anything develops flavors more, you could freeze this in batches. I'm also making enough where I have leftovers, better for me. The garlic. Uh, I put how much garlic in the recipe, but this time of year, because I cook so much, I ground up a bunch of fresh garlic. I basically just peel like three or four bulbs of garlic, put them in a food processor, grind them up, not to a paste, but puree them up, and then at the very end, put in a decent amount of olive oil, probably at least a full cup of extra virgin olive oil. Then I give it a couple pulses with the food processor, and basically every granule of garlic is now coated in oil, so it, it just retains a lot of its original flavor. Also now you have a lot of flavored extra virgin uh, oil with garlic, so it's delicious. Also in this recipe, we're gonna put in some red wine. I just think you need like an average red wine. I mean, I guarantee after making this soup, if you started off with Chateau Latour or Mouton Rothschild or Tuba Chuck, 
I don't think you would taste the difference at the very end. It's more for the acidity in the wine. But, you know, you want a, a decent wine. I want to get a box wine or a gallon jug wine. But you definitely don't have to go spend $20 for the wine you're putting in. Get something that, you know, you want to have some later while you're eating the stew. I'm putting in some of my own wine. I made wine just as a home winemaker for about 10 years. So this is a combination of Zin, Cab, Syrah, and Malbec. The stew meat that I purchased from Costco was a little bigger than one inch cubes. I prefer just personally like three quarter to half inch. I'd rather kind of get a little piece of meat with every scoop of the stew than just a big chunk every once in a while. I'm gonna salt and pepper it now. I'm salted now. I'm just gonna pepper the whole stew at the end. But I salt it kind of as I go in batches. My mindset is if I'm cooking this batch of meat right now, obviously I would season it. And how am I how much salt would I put in it for this batch of meat? So, you know, you, you want to salt it as you go, as you do different batches. You're just building the flavors. You know, you're kind of starting with a base. My mindset, the way I think, is always to, to season as I build the dish, not just at the very end. At the end, it's kind of a adjusting salt and pepper and all that kind of stuff you'll need. So my pans are going, they're really hot. No joke, I constantly set off my fire alarm because I cook a very high heat. What are you going to do? All right, I have two pans, a carbon steel pan and a cast iron pan heating up. I'm going to use pure olive oil. Pure olive oil is pressed, and therefore, it, pure olive oil has a higher smoking point than extra virgin. So a little better for really high heat applications. And also, stew is not necessarily a delicate flavored dish, so cooking with extra virgin at this stage would kind of be a waste. So this is at 412. My cast iron pan is at 470, again, 427. So very hot pan, so don't, don't mess around. You definitely want to get that Mylar reaction that only occurs when the temperature of meat is brought up to about 285 and above. You want to hear that sizzle. If you don't get a sizzle right away, you get heat up your pan enough. Okay, the meat has been cooking for probably about seven minutes. You can see we have some nice Mylar reaction, some nice browning of the meat. You see all this liquid though, it still lets off water. And that's what you don't want too much of because that is causing steaming. I mean, I'm not sure if you can see it through the camera, but it's definitely steaming a bit. So that's why you want a really hot pan and not putting that much meat in the pan at once. And now I'm gonna dump this in my final stew pot, but you wanna make sure all this juice comes with it. So you could deglaze with a little bit of wine every time you empty out one of these pans. So you just get a little red wine, kind of scrape the bottom of the pan to make sure, make sure you get any uh, juicy bits. And all this, it just smells fantastic already. All these little steps are gonna make the stew fantastic at the end. Now for this batch, you can see there's no moisture on the bottom. There's no steaming going on. So it's even better. I put a little less meat in the pan and it's browning up really nicely. That gives a lot of flavor to the entire dish. And again, I'll deglaze this pan with some red wine, put it in my big pot that I'm gonna finish the dish in. I deglaze the pan once with the meat in it. <clears throat> then I dump the meat in the stew pot. Then I deglaze one more time just to be sure I get all this meaty goodness off the pan and into the stew pot. After I deglaze twice, you can see the pan is very clean. And I didn't scrub this at all. I just, just with the wooden spoon, deglazing twice, um, stays really clean. I did rinse it out with water after the second deglaze and put it back on here. Now all the little droplets of water evaporated off. I'll put some more olive oil in there and do my fourth batch of meat. I sauteed all the stew meat. Again, I cubed it up more like half inch to three quarter inch pieces. I probably did two pans four times in order to not overload the pan and to get a nice brown color, nice my yard reaction. The next thing I'll do, and again, I'm making about a triple batch, but the next thing I'll do is put in the stock. This is a beef stock. And then the process starts where this goes on low heat for like four to six hours. What you're trying to get to at the very end is where the meat just pulls apart. Like right now, if I grab a piece of meat, it's, it's pretty tough. This is from a tougher part of the cow. It's usually stew meats are from muscle that's usually working a lot, like the leg muscles calf muscles and so it takes a while for that collagen to break down it has to be over 180 which this will be because water simmers at about 180 and we're going to have it simmering and it has to happen for over a period of a lot of time for that 
collagen to break down and four to six hours, it should just pull away just like pulled pork. And the combination of heat and moisture make it incredibly tender because these cuts of meat that are usually reserved for like stews, they're definitely considered to have much more flavor than your filet mignon, your New York, your prime rib. Those cuts of meat are very tender because they're from the parts of the cow that don't work much. But these cuts of meat have just tons of flavor and it's well worth the effort. Like I said, make a big batch at a time or if you're making some for a dinner party, make extra so you could freeze some and have it for leftovers. So now, when, as this is stewing, I'm gonna do the same thing I was doing to the meat. Um, in separate pans, I'm gonna saute these mushrooms over very high heat. I'm not gonna add salt until they turn brown, because sometimes if you add salt too early when you're sauteing mushrooms, it actually draws moisture out of the mushrooms, and mushrooms have a ton of moisture, and that's gonna cause it to steam instead of brown and get that Maillard reaction. The onions, same thing, saute these over high heat until they caramelize, then I'll put those in the stew. I love bacon on everything. If you don't like bacon or you don't want to put it in, it's not crucial to the dish. But I'm going to saute this bacon until it's about halfway cooked, you know, just starting to turn golden brown, and then I'll add it into the stew. Okay, you see these pans are literally smoking hot. They're about 400 degrees. I'm going to add in some olive oil and then my mushrooms. About a tablespoon in each pan. Again, you want to see that sizzle right away. Caramelize my yellow onions. Again, about a tablespoon in each pan. This will probably take about 15 minutes. The onions have been sauteing for about 10 minutes now. It's about halfway there. You can see there's definitely some caramelization. I'm going to turn down the heat now because this pan is definitely retaining this heat. I don't want to burn too many pieces. I just kind of want to caramelize the whole pan. So I'll turn the heat down to medium and go probably about another 10 minutes. The onions look caramelized. Now I'm just going to deglaze with some of the red wine. Again, deglazing gets all the delicious bits that are stuck to the pan, pulls them off the pan to go in the, the pot with the rest of the stew. It's, it's a very crucial part of each step is it's very important to deglaze after you saute the mushrooms, the meat, the onions. The next thing I'm going to do is make the roux for the beef stew. Equal parts butter and flour. Just melt your butter. Cook it for sure for five minutes and at the most 10 over low heat. Okay, the flame is turned down. And that's it. Stir up the mixture. The roux, you just you could use cold, you could use hot like this. It's good to maybe do about a quarter of the recipe at a time. Um, you know, just to see how it's thickening up. And I would give it about five minutes in between the additions of roux to see how it's working. Because it does take a few minutes for the starch from the flour to have its thickening effect. Again, this process is to cook out the raw starch flavor of the flour and also to make it so the flour doesn't clump when you put it in your stew. You could use the same process for gravies or soups. The beef stew's been cooking for about three hours. The way you tell if your beef stew is done is basically pull out a few pieces of meat. Just with a fork, you should be able to pull it apart. See how that pulls apart like that? So that means things are looking good. So you don't want to add your roux until you could pull your, the meat apart. The main reason for that is because once you add the roux, the stew will become thicker. And especially if you're cooking it on the stovetop, there's an easier chance you could burn it on the bottom. Um, I've been cooking the stew in that big roasting pan in my oven at about 370 and kind of, again, just makes it easier where you never have to worry about burning because it's just a very even heat inside an oven in that kind of dish. Okay, the stew is done. So what I'm going to do now is pull out the rosemary and the bay leaves. And when I put the bay leaf and rosemary in there, I kind of put it on one corner of the pot. Usually if I stirred or mixed in ingredients, I just did it on this 90% area of the pot. That way the bay leaf won't get lost in the mixture and it'd just be a little easier to find and, and pull out when I'm done. The next step will be to put in the roux to thicken it up a little bit. And you want it to be at a simmer when it's when you're putting in the roux because that tends to be when the thickening action will happen. 
try to put in about a third of the roux just to give you an idea. You can see how it's fairly, I mean, it's just the consistency almost of water right now. So right now it's not thick at all and we'll put in some, about a third of the roux and see how it goes. And again, you don't have to worry about clumping. You want to stir, but that butter or the flour, because it's surrounded by butter, is just going to disperse evenly throughout the dish. Okay, I waited about five minutes since I first put in the roux. It's definitely a little bit thicker. Still, right now, I'd say this would be the good consistency. Like if you were making a soup, it definitely has more body than just water. I'm going to put in about another third of roux. Stir that in and then wait for about five minutes. Okay, so far I put about 80% of the roux in there. It's definitely thickened up, but I think it could go a little more. It's definitely acceptable the way it is there. Another thing I'm not sure if you could tell from the video, but it definitely developed a sheen. The, the roux kind of brought out a nice shine to the dish. So I'll put in the rest of the roux. And again, I'm making this for about 20 people for Christmas. I'm not waiting until Christmas Day to do it because I want to be able to enjoy friends and family. Let this kind of come down to room temperature for a couple hours sitting on the stovetop. Then I'll put it in the refrigerator and three days from now it'll still be delicious and kitchen won't be a disaster. All right, our beef stew is done. It's absolutely delicious. The meat pulls apart great flavor. It could be done days ahead of time. You can freeze this, it only gets better. So now you can make beef stew also. Get out there, try this. It's a little more involved as far as some of the techniques, but trust me, it really adds to the finished dish. Thanks for joining me. Now get out there and cook this for someone you love. So if you like these videos, please subscribe and hit that little bell icon. That way you'll get a notification whenever I put out a new video.